Hey guys, welcome to another exciting, extreme example of an episode of Hunker Down with Seth. Today, I got a guy on, not only one of my favorite people, not only one of my first friends I made in comedy in Long Beach, but when it comes to just all-around looks, he's a definite seven and a half. Uh, Dan Farias, Daniel Farias, D-Man Faria, Daniel Farias, welcome to the show. Alright, that seven and a half prompts an immediate hang up for me. It was nice talking to you. It's out of seven point five. Seven point five, I I'd only do eight or higher. I know. That's my podcasting I'm standard. So, Hi, I'm Daniel. Daniel Farius, a great friend of mine, great friend of pretty much everybody in Long Beach. I'm yes, I know everybody in Long Beach, every single person. Yes. Down to the to the uh the poorest crackhead. Um, yes. That... I, I, we met. We met in Long Beach, Seth, back when the library was happening. Oh, Remember that... the library? Barely. I mean, I drive by it uh, a couple times a week on my way to uh, the Huntington Beach protests. Oh, do you go to those? Uh, just to run people over. I've been meaning down to go go to them and uh, get some footage there. I I got some footage of people walking around the, the first week it opened. You know when Newsom opened up the beaches for a week and yeah. then everyone went crazy and then he closed them down <laughs> the following week? Oh, well, I, I got footage that. of people walking around there. And there was a shit ton of people. They weren't protesting, but they were hanging out like there was no pandemic going on, which was scary. Yeah, well, Huntington Beach was never known for their Nobel Prize winners. I'll just say that. No, they're known. They're known for MMA. There's a shit ton of mixed martial artists that live down there, and they have a bunch of schools and shit. Yeah, I think the second, oh, yeah. the second biggest industry behind MMA in Huntington Beach is tattoo laser removal. That is very true. <laughs> That's true. Samoa Joe's from Huntington Beach for any of you wrestling fans out there. So. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm a huge Joe supporter. So you you like the Joe? You like the the Samoan submission machine? He is. I've seen him live a couple times. A couple just like back in the day when he was on the independent scene, and then I went to an NXT event where he where he beat Finn Balor. However, afterwards Finn Balor got the coup de gras on him. Oh no! Probably beat him for the NXT championship. Yep, that's when they were feuding for it. And that's where I bought my Austin Aries t-shirt. He's not with the company anymore. Nope. Not. He left after that WrestleMania, I think. Yeah, cause, and I saw that WrestleMania. That was such a bunk match he was in. It was just not fun. With, uh, with Neville. Yep. Pac. Pac. Pac now in AEW. Yeah. I, I haven't been watching wrestling much because, uh, First of all, WWE bra is unwatchable. First of all, <laughs> and uh, it's bad. It's so bad. It is just not good. And I've been trying to get into AEW, but just never got around to it. I uh, I never took you for a wrestling fan. I didn't know that. No, I I've been watching wrestling since I was uh, my earliest childhood memory of wrestling was when Jake the Snake DDT'd Ricky Steamboat. Oh. So that's when I was... That was like the first DDT ever, right? Yeah, that was like when I was three or four, I remember seeing that just right on the concrete, and then he threw Ricky in. Dang, dude. Back then, DDTs were like shocking. Yeah. Like when when Jake the Snake did that, everyone was like... Like that... That must have hurt. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was over. And only Jake did that. Com- yeah, and it was only it was a complete accident, right? Like he didn't mean to do that. Yeah, he uh well, quote unquote didn't mean. He didn't mean to hurt him so much. But <laughs> you know, he meant to do it, but he didn't mean to do it, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. So got- I haven't been watching wrestling. I don't. I try and not watch wrestling, but 
Yeah. I've been specifically trying to not to watch WWE right now because I feel that the company over the years, especially now, is just morally bankrupt. Completely. I, <laughs> you know, I was still paying attention to them. Like, I, when Linda McMahon joined the Trump administration, that's when I cut off my uh, WWE Network subscription. But I sort of, like, watched the YouTubes and kind of paid attention to them. But as soon as yeah. Shane McMahon won the best wrestler in the world, the tournament, I was like, no, I'm done. Yeah. Well, did you hear what happened, uh, like, a couple of weeks ago? Almost like a month ago. Um, what Vince McMahon did? Oh, didn't he release, like, 50 wrestlers? Yeah, you know, he released 25. He released 25 wrestlers from the contract. He furloughed dozens of producers. And then I think he fired a whole bunch of people that actually work at Titan Towers in Connecticut. Apparently, uh, uh, one of the workers still working at in Connecticut said that 40% of the fucking office over there in Titan Towers was, was laid off. Jesus. So they were, yeah, they were letting people go. And the funny thing is, yeah, like, there's a bunch of companies right now that are laying people off because of coronavirus, of course, and they're furloughing a whole bunch of people. Um, WWE, though, could afford to pay all those people yeah. because they have such lucrative TV deals. They, um, they have, I think, almost $500 million in the bank just from the deals that they have with the USA Network and Fox. And letting go of all those people only saves them around upwards to like seven hundred thousand dollars jeez that's that's you know they're on the stock market they gotta show the stockholders that we're not gonna lose money out of the gracious of your heart we gotta yeah they they wanted to look very uh that's what a lot of people say that they wanted to look profitable that they still had high profits by letting all those people go yeah well I do know that AEW cut costs. They stopped um, getting Jericho a little bit of the bubbly. Yeah, they did. How, the, why did they stop giving him the bubbly? We're not going to have any more of the beans. Well, it shows that that only saved them $700,000 as well. That's <laughs> how much bubbly they were buying. Jericho, man. That guy's expensive. Yeah, and... You know, it's one of those things that Jericho wants the company to succeed, so knock off the bubbly. Isn't it very, very telling of how legit Jericho is, man? Like he, like he does whatever he wants. He, he, if Jericho puts his name on something, it's probably gonna be good. Yeah, I mean, Fozzie is good. Um, he. I don't know if he's done any movies, has he? No, but he's been on a lot of uh, reality shows. He can, like, on singing reality shows. Yeah. He, I think he also hosts a few. Yeah, I mean, it, Jericho could, like, host a crack house and it'd be the best crack house ever. Yeah. You know. True that. And I've seen my share of crack houses. There's, like, four of them on my street alone. In Long Beach, right? Yep, right on 7th. Nice. Nice, nice. Yeah. I say that just to worry my mother and future mother-in-law. She uh, listens to this, so... I always mess around with the crime. Oh! <laughs> There's no oh, crack no. houses. I remember when you would show up to the library with, with crackheads, your crackhead posse. Yeah. I'd be like, Seth, why are you bringing all the crackheads? We're going to have to kick them out. And you're all like, but they're my friends. Yeah, I, I was giving typing classes so they could like get data entry better. jobs. You know, it's like Seth teaches typing instead of Mario teaches typing? Yeah, exactly. They can't afford uh, Mario, they're crackheads, so they get me. And I'm willing to trade typing lessons for crack, that's why they hang around me. For crack? Yeah, Man. that's how I get paid. You gotta set your you guys, you gotta set your standards a little higher. All right, you gotta do you you got people sucking dick out here for crack, man. Yeah, I'm not doing that, but I'll teach typing. 
for crack. I mean, in my defense, crack is really great. Have you ever tried crack? No, like, never. Real, like tried crack. Never. I remember, your mother and your mother-in-law listens to this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that, but legitimately, even if they didn't, no, I've never done crack in my life. I wouldn't even know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the <laughs> that sounds like the tone of somebody that's done crack in their life. Yep, you got me. It's all right, Seth. Your secret is safe with me and the internet. Yeah, only the quintillions of listeners. Hey, here's a transition. Speaking of yeah. the internet, you have three podcasts. I do, yeah. Remember when I was supposed to talk about that at the beginning? Yeah, then we started <laughs> talking about podcasts. wrestling and then crack. Have... Three podcasts. Yeah. I have uh, my first podcast. is called It's an Adventure with Daniel and Victor. It's the podcast, the first podcast I ever made with my buddy Victor Wright. Great guy. Uh, you can find that podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thank you, sir. I, I plugged it a lot while I was listening to the library in Long Beach. Like yep. a little open mic. I hope to see it again one day. Me too. It's I, my uh, favorite. I, yeah, you, you can listen to that podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. If you want to donate to us, you can do so on Anchor. Uh, I have another podcast called Please Leave by Nine. It's a, it's a comedy lifestyle podcast. It's a real hoot. Uh, each episode is a party. And uh, you can listen to that everywhere as well. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And you can donate to that on Anchor as well. And I have a third podcast set. A third a podcast third. called Wrath of a Menace. Whoa. Abbreviated to WOM. That is W-O-A-M exclamation point. And you can listen to that shit everywhere. Like the other two, you can listen to it everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you can join us on Anchor. I also have a YouTube channel under my name called Daniel Ferries. I post a bunch of videos on there. I have my blog slash web series on there called Stand. That is where I document my life as a uh, comedian slash content creator. Wow. And on my social medias, primarily my TikTok, I have a little news show, mini news show called Giving You the Deets. Uh, I post the episodes first on TikTok, and then I post the rest on my Instagram stories and my Twitter. There you go. That's all my shit. Go watch and listen to it right now. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so it's an adventure, though, with Victor. What kind of adventures do you guys go on? Well, we usually talk about internet shit. Like, the first few episodes, uh, we talk, we read some fan fiction. Uh, we found some silly uh, internet articles. Oh. Uh, we talked about, you know, like those articles where, where it's like people being stupid. Yeah. Like somebody trying to return a camel to a 7-Eleven. Those type of stories. And then we make fun of them. Yeah. Uh, and then we also just talk about what's on our minds, what we've been watching, what we've been playing, you know, that sort of thing. It's like TMZ, but better. But better, way better. Yeah. TMZ told to you by two incels. <laughs> no, come on, you're not incel. Uh, um, no. With you, it's definitely a choice to have that personality. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even an incel, man. I got a girlfriend. Yeah, and she's wonderful. My hand, I'm just kidding. Actually, I have, I have an actual girlfriend. No, I, I, I was talking about your hand. I brought it to the library once before. Yeah, I, I was talking about your hand. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah, my hand's real good, too. Yeah. There you go. She, she's a real beaut. Oh, absolutely. She's really nice. I've met her plenty of times, and I do have to say she is very charitable for having someone like Daniel as the boyfriend. I mean, if you still saw her and then you saw Daniel, it's like, yeah, she's she's the charitable one. Too bad no one's ever going to get a shaker anymore. Oh, that's because unfortunate. Because virus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to keep that to myself. I just shook the shit out of her last time I saw her. I'm talking about your girlfriend, not your hand. I just gra <laughs> grabbed her by the shoulders and just went, Hey, earthquake. <laughs> do not do that to her, though. Do not. She did not like no. it when I did. 
Also, I had no idea she was your girlfriend. So. She's one of your crackhead friends. They live down the street from you. Yeah, you know, I'm waving to two of them right now. Hey, Steve. Hey, Toothless Mike. Tooth, Toothless Mike. It's, the crackheads are gonna get mad that we've been talking so much shit. They don't. They pawn their iPads. No. <sighs> I want to say Toothless Mike. That's not his official real name. It's Toothless Michael. Toothless Michael? Okay. Yeah, I said Toothless Mike, but that's not his real name. His real name is Toothless Michael. Does he get mad if you call him Toothless Mike? He's like, right. my name is Toothless Michael. I ain't got no teeth. My name is Michael. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't get mad. It's just like calling someone Daniel or Dan. If he didn't like it, he would just politely correct you. I get you. So, so Wom. That that's Whoa. that's my catchphrase now because of your podcast, Wom. Copyright strike, man. That shit's mine. What the fuck? I already got a logo. Oh, you're trying to jack my shit. I already got a logo. It looks um, looks a lot like the Subway logo, so I might be in a lot more legal trouble than you think. Oh, yeah. You probably touch kids like like uh, kid toucher Jared Fogle. Um, Sing it right here, right now. <laughs> no, not at all. No. <laughs> I, 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 make right sure, right I'm, I make sure they're of a legal age before I touch them. You know, I'm not a creep. Yeah, it's. I mean, I say, are you eighteen? Yes. May I see some photo ID? Good. All right. I'm sorry. This is your fault. <laughs> that and that absolves you of any legal harm or whatever. I don't know. I haven't been caught yet. <laughs> so, or will I ever? Because <laughs> I don't do that. Well, so you're so, so Womb. Yes. Womb. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Wom. all right. Womb, what are you and Louise? You said that you had... Oh, wait, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was I'm talking gonna... over you. Uh, Womb, you're... Luis uh, Garcia is your co-host. What do you guys talk about? Yeah. Uh, we just talk about, you know, young guy shit, like uh, video games. Uh, Trump, fucking Spider-Man, uh, who'd win in a fight, Batman or Iron Man, um, fucking Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone, The Mandalorian, all that good shit, you know? Well, totally excited for season two. Sure. (laughs) All right. It was all right. I liked the the first couple of episodes, but then after a while, I was just like, I, I don't really care. I, they started to turn into Xena episodes. It did. That's something I said on Twitter. It felt like those weird syndicated TV shows that came out in the late 90s and early mid 2000s, you know, like Xena or Hercules or fucking uh, Andromeda, those type of weird ass shows. Yeah. It, I mean, pretty much from episode six through eight, you know, before the final double part episode, but after, after when the uh, when he escapes Carl's Weathers the first time, that those middle episodes are just it's weird. It's just like it's like watching uh, the Roadrunner and the Coyote some at some points. Yeah. I totally agree. It seemed kind of aimless. I don't know. Yeah, and now at least they got a solid plot. You know, what are they going to do together? It's not... They could start with the buddy comedy stuff, like like some of the great duos, like uh, Lenny and Squiggy. Yeah. Or Pinky and the Brain. Yeah, that's probably the best. Well, 
Well, did you see that Boba Fett's apparently going to be in the next season? Oh, absolutely. I am so hyped for the next season. Yeah. You know, it, it's, you know, not only Boba Fett, uh, Rosario Dawson's going to play Ahsoka Tano, and they just announced some other characters. What? Yeah, it is seriously going to be the greatest thing of all our lives, and I haven't even mentioned Baby Yoda yet. I just mentioned Baby Yoda. You just mentioned Baby Yoda. Yep. Man, Baby Yoda took the fucking world by storm, dude. People love that little shit. Yeah, on my car, I have a license plate uh, holder that says, If Baby Yoda dies, we riot. Oh, I remember when people had that for other things. Yeah. They were, back then when Breaking Bad was really big, they had patches that said if uh, Walter White dies, we riot. Like, something like that. That, that. That's a phrase. That's a new phrase that come up here that if any TV character that anybody loves perishes, there are, <laughs> people will go out into the streets like the fucking Lakers won the championship. Surprisingly, it stems from pro wrestling. From uh, the CM Punk years. Does it? Yeah. People oh. would hold signs that said, if Cena wins, we riot. I believe that. Yep. Were you a big Cena fan? No. Do you believe in... Are you a member of the C Nation? No, no. Uh, here's what happened with my sort of pro wrestling history. For a while, before he murdered his wife and kid, I was a huge... Chris Benoit fan. <laughs> but when he murdered his wife That's and been kid. A deal breaker. Yeah. I, I no, because I would watch his old matches and whenever he did a, a diving headbutt, before I was like, Yeah, this is awesome. He's putting his body on the line. Now it's like, is that the one? You know, is that the thing that messed him up beyond recognition? That's so true. So when oh, I yeah. So that really jaded me because I just, I just thought, why are these guys damaging their bodies? And then, sort of, two thousand fourteen or so, I started watching again. And then, about three years ago, I just had enough. Yeah, I, uh, I, I can detail my experience. I, my brother was a big um, wrestling fan, and he'd been a wrestling fan since I want to say the late eighties and early nineties. He was a big Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart fan. Gotcha. Right? And um, that persisted into into the a Attitude Era. And then the Attitude Era is when wrestling really blew up, right? Yep. And so that that's the wrestling I grew up with. And I, I went into uh, Ruthless Aggression. Like, I went into that. I remember that. But then midway through Ruthless Aggression, I I cut out. I, I, I went into middle school. And then um, all of a sudden, wrestling was not allowed. I, I, I just felt lame. As a 12-year-old yeah. and a 13-year-old, I'm like, man, this shit's kind of dumb. And so I just fell out of it. And I think also I, I got bored of the storylines. The storylines were pretty dumb. Uh, a lot of the people that I recognized, a lot of the people I liked were leaving the company. And everything was just sort of changing. You know how, like, wrestling... Like the, how how the generations pass and then people get released, yeah. And then you're all like, oh, like wrestling sucks now because they don't have Jeff Hardy. That's what happened to me. Yeah. You know? It's sort of like Saturday Night Live when they start to rotate casts and you have mass exodus. Because cause right now Saturday Night Live is as good as I remember, but I remember there are times. Like, when Will Ferrell first joined the cast, he was the worst Saturday Night Live uh, member I've ever seen, like, his first year. Really? And, yeah. I was like, okay, this sucks. So he's, I'm... like, a legend. Exactly, you know. But the first year, I remember him just being really, really annoying and terrible, and nobody got him. And then, uh, then when he started doing Alex Trebek on Celebrity Jeopardy, it's like, oh, I get it, this guy is... A super actor and such a straight face. It's great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sometimes it takes time, man. Oh, definitely. They were going to cut John Cena, dude. They were going to cut him. And then he came up with the Doctor of Thugonomics and then the rest. 
Well, the rest half is history. Yeah. I couldn't see it coming. So. So. I think what got me back into wrestling, I got back into wrestling when I was in school. Like around, I want to say, 2014 and 2015. And what got me back into it was YouTube. I, w- I, w- I didn't start wrestling, I watched wrestling. Like I wasn't getting back into the product. But I was watching these YouTube videos of these guys talking about wrestling. Yeah. These British guys. Oh, um, it's Cultaholic? And, and got me. Cultaholic, yeah. Back then when they were, uh, what culture? Yeah. When um, Adam Blompied was around and he wasn't, uh, he didn't disappear for two years because he got me too. Uh, yeah. That's what got me back into wrestling, those videos. And it, it, I, I never watched full episodes. I would only watch the highlights on YouTube and then watch their analysis because I always found their analysis more interesting than the actual matches. And um, now I, I just completely, like, I do follow the storylines, but I in no way try and support WWE whatsoever. I don't give views. I don't plan on ever going to a, a live event no. as long as Vince McMahon remains ahead of the company and they keep up with these really shitty uh, business practices. Yep. And, and, yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's start to wrap up. Rounding third, coming home. Uh, what's the first thing you're gonna do as soon as this quarantine is lifted and it's safe to go out? Heroin. No. <laughs> I'm probably gonna go out and do stand up. I'm gonna try and see if I can get the library up. I miss it a lot. I do this. too. This this pandemic is horrible. It's fucking horrible. I, I, it's not good that we're staying inside and that everybody's life is on pause. But it certainly uh, lit a fire under my ass, and I have tried my very best to explore other things, mainly all the content I'm making. Yep. But fuck, nothing really... Uh, stand-up gives me something that what I'm working on right now can never give me. And I, I can't wait to get that back. I know, just... I. I miss the library because I always love doing crowd work at the library. It, I mean, those people. That's the best place to do it because nobody gives a shit. Exactly, <laughs> and I, and I remember every set because it's mostly just students studying and they don't really want to be bothered with. Uh, you know, I I always started saying, guys, I know you're doing projects or working on stuff. Ignore me. I I won't hold it against you. And I miss that, just, because as soon as I said, ignore me, you know, continue what you're working on, everybody just looked up and like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I remember, every time I would do my host set, I would just have to accept that I was going to take a massive L. Yep. That I was just going to be the first one to eat a dick. And that's, that was just my job as a host, and I loved it! <laughs> I loved seeing the night turn around and everybody be more willing and opening up and seeing what worked and what didn't. It was just great. Yeah, it, it's... I like seeing you down there, Seth. Oh, I miss it. You'd always fill the room with your crackhead. I mean, they would be a problem because of the crackhead, but at least there was bodies in there, you know? Yeah, and plus it helps you because... It's a uh, one drink um, minimum, so they're buying drinks. They're going there. I think more people are addicted to how good the library's drinks are than to crack. That's how good the library's drinks are. Bro, the library has a drink called the Leprechaun Lip Smacker. Ooh. All right, the Leprechaun Lips Lip Smacker, and they sell that all year round. God, bro. I know. I, I try to stay uncomplicated. I just get the uh, Thai milk tea. And it is so good. I miss that. That's the thing I miss most about the library. I mean, the comedy and the friends were good. But literally, just getting there knowing I'm going to have a good Thai milk tea. That really made my day a lot. I'm getting choked up. Good times, man. Yeah. Good times. All right. Well, Daniel... I love you. I miss you. I, I, as soon as we're cleared to hug people, you'll be one of the first people I hug. I will let you shake my hand. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Daniel Farias. He's on TikTok, YouTube, three podcasts, all on Spotify. Look him up on uh, YouTube, F-A-R-I-A-S, and Daniel's Daniel. 
And, um, yeah, just learn to love him as much as I learned to love him. Miss you, buddy. I hope to see you again soon. Miss you, too. And thanks for joining us on Hunker Down with Seth.